Howdy, everybody. Hope all is going well with you today. And I uh, thought we would have some more fun today learning about Jesus and everything that he did to get his church started. So um, let's go ahead. We talked a little bit about this last week. We had the new verse. Um, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about it first. We'll just be um, maybe learning this very first part this first week. So I wanted to talk to you about that. It says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And that's Matthew 28, 19. So what does it mean? Well, therefore, whenever you see a therefore in the Bible, you ask what it's there for. Usually ta it's talking about something in the previous verse. Well, in the previous verse, it talks, Jesus says, the Father gave me all the power and all the authority over everything. So therefore, you can go and make disciples knowing that I'm behind you and I have all the power. I can do anything you ask. And what does he want us to do with that? He wants us to go and make disciples. What are disciples? We've talked about that a little bit before. It's people who believe in Jesus. So to make disciples, first of all, they have to become a believer, right? So you have to tell them about Jesus and how he died for them and their sins. And they have to turn from their sins and turn toward Jesus. Okay? Um and then to follow him, right? And disciples are people who are studying, like Jesus' disciples, the, when they were on the earth, they followed Jesus everywhere, every minute. They were with him all the time, learning from him. And that's what we need to do. We need to be learning from Jesus and learning about him every day from our, with our Bibles and with uh, talking to him in prayer and with going to church, all those things. So that's how we can, and we can help do, we can help do that with his power, right? And it says, all the nations. What are nations? Well, it's like the United States. The United States is one nation. Canada's one nation. Mexico's one nation. Okay, Japan. Okay, those are all nations. And it says all the nations. So that means the whole what? The whole world. Okay, so he wants us to go all over the world and tell everyone about Jesus. That's why when wherever we go, we need to be thinking about that. So anyway, well, let's just talk or let's just uh, say the very first part a couple times and then we'll go on. I was going to try this. I don't know. This is kind of lighter. There you go. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations. Say it one more time with me. Therefore, go. You can yell the word go. Go and make disciples of all the nations. All right, good job. All right, so we're talking about that part in Acts again. We're in Acts about when Jesus is first trying to starting his church. So maybe you know by now if you've been watching these, what book of the Bible Acts is in? Can anybody tell me? Hmm. Okay, is it New Testament or Old Testament? New Testament, right? Okay, and then it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. So it's the fifth book in your New Testament. And today we're going to be in Acts 2. And it's talking about how the church first started. And it's very interesting. You need a piece of paper to start out with. Okay, so I want you to grab a piece of paper. It could be any old scrap piece of paper doesn't have to be anything fancy. We don't really like to waste paper, you know. But anyway, so, and you're going to help tell the story today. Isn't that awesome? Okay. There's a special day. It's called Pentecost. Okay. When Jesus' friends met together. This was when, after Jesus went back um, to heaven. All right. And so... His friends met together, so I want you to shake hands or fist bump or elbow bump or whatever with three people that are around you right now. All right, go for that. Come right back. Okay, suddenly 
They heard a loud sound like a mighty windstorm. Can you make your um, sheet of paper go back and forth like, like a windstorm? Okay. And then flames appeared above everybody's head. Can you make your paper all crackly and like sound like a sound like a wind or a firestorm? Okay. You can hear that when you're out by the fire this time of the year, right? Hopefully you've had some fires by now. Okay. And when what that was was it was the Holy Spirit coming. When Jesus was here, he had promised the Holy Spirit would come and help them to make disciples. And so this was the Holy Spirit coming. And when he came, he also helped the disciples to speak in different languages because there were people there from all over. It was a special time of, it was a special celebration. It was Passover. And there were people from all these different countries that spoke all different languages. And it said that the people could hear the word of God in what Jesus had done in all their own languages. Do you think that Peter and James and John and all those people knew all those different languages? No. Matter of fact, Peter and some of the other ones were just fishermen. They didn't know all these different languages. It was a miracle from God. It was the Holy Spirit coming. The Holy Spirit is an interpreter, and he did that. Anyway, so I want you now for a minute to make up your own language real quick. Just say something to each other and make it sound like your own language, okay? Just go ahead and do that and come right back. Okay, so other people heard all this happening, heard the different languages, and what was going on, and they were like awed about it. You know, can you think of a time when that happens to you? Like maybe when you go to the fireworks here, we'll be going in a few weeks. Um, going to the fireworks, and you're going, ooh, ah. Can you do that? Go, ooh, ah. All right. Well, Peter explained to them what happened. He told people that they needed to turn away from the bad things that they were doing. Can you do that? Can you stand up real quick? Anna, what I want you to do is turn away from me real quick. I'm halfway away so you can't see me, okay? Stay there for a second, okay? And listen to, but listen to what I'm saying, okay? To repent, which is something a word the Bible uses a lot too, means to actually turn away, to turn away from those bad things, to turn away from sin. And... Then, of course, we need to turn back and focus on God. So go ahead and turn the rest of the way around, and now you can see me again. All right. So they had Jesus. Once you believe that you died, he told them about dying on the Jesus dying on the cross, and for their sins, and that they and coming back to life so that they could experience God's forgiveness. So that's why it turned around, okay? They could turn their life toward Jesus. As Peter preached, he convinced, or should I say the Holy Spirit convinced, okay? As he talked, the Holy Spirit convinced people to turn toward Jesus and to give their lives to him. And that's how the Christian church started. And can you say thank you and express the joy and awesomeness of what Christ did there. Yeah, whenever we see um, someone turn toward the Lord, we used to light candles in church and we would applaud them. You can say, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Okay, you do whatever you want. However you usually, maybe you jump up and down for joy. Whatever you do normally to when you're excited about something, okay? All right, and thank Jesus for it. Okay, well, thank you for helping me tell the story of how the early church started. God sent the, Holy, sent the Holy Spirit as a gift to them to help them. And you know what? He sends that to us too. We've talked about that before. When you ask Jesus to forgive your sins and you start following him, he 
well, actually, before you start following him, he comes into your life and helps you to follow him, right? Yeah. Okay. And he helped the early church, and he'll help us, too, to tell others about Jesus. Um, what other ways does he help us? Okay, so we said it, he can help us tell others to have the boldness, to have the strength, to know what to say, to tell other people about Jesus. But what else does he help us to do? Does he help us to get through hard times? He sure does. This is kind of a funny year, you know, and um, not funny as in ha ha, but we've had some hard times here, okay? And um, the Lord can help us to get through that time. Sometimes he doesn't take away those things, bad things that happen in our lives, but he will help us through them. The Holy Spirit can speak to us. That's another reason why we memorize our scriptures, because if we memorize scriptures, he brings them back to our memory at a time that we need them. I've had that lots and lots of times in my life. So, yeah, so that's one thing he does. Does he go with you every day? Yes, he does. Um, and he helps us with lots of different things. Just You can talk about it with you and your family about different things that he's helped you with. Okay? Um, he can help us when we're not feeling well, when we're feeling well, and we're out and about and being a testimony to others. He can help us in a lot of different things. And we need to thank him for that. That's one of the reasons in our prayers it's important to thank God for all the things that he's done. It also reminds us of all the things that he's done when we thank him. So he helped the early church grow. He'll help us grow. He'll help our church as we go back um, to listening to Pastor on Sunday, which is so exciting. We'll be doing that soon. Okay, so there's a couple of... of um, games that you can play that we're used to playing at home but we're just going to play them a couple different ways okay you're familiar with the um london the game london bridge is coming down you put your hands together with another friend and then your other friends go through and maybe in your life it'll be your brothers or sisters or parents um but that's okay that's fine but instead of seeing London bridges coming down, we're going, Holy Spirit coming down, coming down, coming down. Holy Spirit coming down with flames of fire. Come down now and fill us up, fill us up, fill us up. Come down now and fill us up, Holy Spirit. And of course, on the last one, on the last syllable there, you capture the person in your bridge. Okay, and then you'll switch and somebody else can go through. So go ahead and do that um, and then come back. Okay. Okay, when have you felt God near to you? Um, when has he helped you do something? I want you to talk about that in your, you know, in the group that uh, just played your game. All right, go ahead and do that. And then another game is um you ever had red light green light yeah okay so you're going to have somebody who's given the instructions okay up front and then two other people stand back and then when they say crawl skip or walk you can do any kind of move you want jump whatever then you move in that way toward them okay but then when they say stop you freeze in place and call until they call out something else when you reach the wall on the other side, I want you all to yell, we depend on the Holy Spirit, okay, or Holy Spirit help, whatever you want. You can do it the way you want to, okay, whatever's, you know, easier and is more exciting for you, okay. So go ahead and play that and come back. Okay, in what ways did you depend on the leader's instructions? Hmm. You have to really pay attention, right? You have to listen well, okay? And then you have to stop immediately. It's sometimes kind of hard, isn't it? It really is. What does it mean to depend on the Holy Spirit? In our Bible first, it said, therefore, go. So it sounds easy. When God says to go, you go. And when he says to stop, you stop. But you know, you really have to be 
listening well to do that, don't you? You really do. And you have to have the faith in God to do it. Okay? And you need to depend on God. In order to have faith, you have to depend on God that he's going to direct you and everything's going to be the way it should be. Right? You have to have that faith to step out and go. Or to step out. Sometimes it takes a lot of faith to stop. Okay, what you're doing. So, and we have the Holy Spirit to help us if we'll go to him and we'll listen to him. All right. Okay, one more thing. Um, I'm going to end us in prayer today. And at the end of the prayer, then I want you to say the names of people that come to your mind um, from what I'm praying. Okay, and then when you're all done, you can say amen. Because remember, that means you agree. All right. All right. So God, help everyone in the room reach out to others with your love. Send your Holy Spirit to help us and the people that we love. Please help these people. And go ahead and name some people. And when you're done, say amen.